G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and this is a video interview with the very amazing Adam Phillips, he's a prolific animator, educator and author. On Newgrounds alone his videos are viewed by over 14 million people and he's worked for the likes of Disney, Electronic Arts and the Dungeons and Dragons folks. He's known for his ability to produce stunning scenery and visual effects and is the founder of the Body Castle Academy of Visual Effects course and winner of many awards including TGSNT, W3 and the Newgrounds Tank Award. Adam Phillips, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Good. Thanks for thanks for joining me. It's always interesting when I do the the intro segment, which is just this this barrage of compliments, <laughs> while, while they have to sit there and awkwardly think, "This is a little awkward." Well, yeah, it's um, kind of like laid out in front of you. It just makes you feel old, really. <laughs> At the same time, though, it must go through your head. You must think, "I'm pretty awesome." Uh. No. Yes, I do. No, I don't. <laughs> yes, I do. No, I don't. So, can no. you can you introduce yourself first by your alias? I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. Is it Clyde? Clout? Yeah. Clyde. It's Clyde. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Scots Gaelic, but not that I'm you know connected to Scotland in any way. But uh, mm -hmm. I was learning Irish Gaelic for a long time, and um, before I before I decided to learn Gaelic, I just picked up the first book that said Gaelic, and turned out to be Scots Gaelic, and I learned a little bit of it. Um, and then I found out that it wasn't Irish, so I uh, decided to change to Irish and um, pretty much didn't really go far with it, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> but uh, Clyde was just, a, there's, there's a place in Scotland called Strathclyde and it's pronounced Strath, C-H-L-U-A-I-D. And um, I chose Clyde because my dad used to, um, I remember, I've got this early memory of my dad um, getting in the car with him and him saying, let's ride, Clyde. And so, you know, that was, you know, he, he called me Clyde once or twice in my life. So that's cool. <laughs> that's just been my internet alias it's, from day one. Yeah, it's funny to, to hear all people's different stories as to how that sort of originated for them because it's always often a very little personal thing and then it becomes this public image that you create for yourself, you know? Yeah, I've got a couple of minor aliases that I kind of like keep disconnected so I can, you know, do other stuff online, like, you know, be members of communities or whatever and mm -hmm. use another alias. But uh, yeah, this one's kind of like my artistic alias. So um, first, let's get started with something that I think most people find very interesting on my channel because a lot of people uh, who follow me are interested in animation. You have a background with Disney that a lot of self-made animators who uh, do freelance and do their own work don't have. That's a, a really cool thing to have. So do you want to run us through how you worked with them and, and where that began? Yeah, I think um, it's it was definitely a dream job. That was there's no two ways about it. And uh, for me, I never really considered animation as a career. Um, I was you know more into comic books. I wanted to make my own Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles kind of thing. I wanted to be the next Eastman and Laird and or Laird. Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, so I, I was like focused on learning anatomy and you know sequential storytelling in panels and all that sort of, mm -hmm. sort of stuff and you know, facial expressions of hands and um but i'd never really considered animation until i my mother saw the ad in the paper saying we want artists for um to train up to be animators uh and so i applied for the job and everything but yeah that was there was complete you know it's one of those things where life takes you on a completely mm. different detour kind of well it's not completely different because it was in artistic you know in the artistic field and I remember my mum saying to me quite early on um, you know setting me up for real life saying mm. uh, preparing me for the harsh truth that I may never work I ne may never earn a living doing artwork um, but you know uh, I, I really wanted to I was focused on making a living from doing artwork whether it was just you know t-shirt designs or, mm -hmm. or my own comic book thing um, that's what I wanted to do. So I think D I was very lucky to get that job with Disney. I was, I was lucky at the time and Disney was hiring artists who were already artists. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not hiring people who are already animators or they weren't at the time. They were hiring people who are already good artists, training them in animation. So that was kind of how that started. Was there a beginning, middle and end to that, to that story with Disney? So like when you joined them and then the training period and then like did it wind down before it ended or did it just finish up out of nowhere or kind of like the uh, probation period yeah, well i mean thing. you were with them for how many years about 
11 years. 11 years, yeah. Yeah. So throughout that time, was it all pretty consistent? Or was it a bit of a roller coaster? Or? Oh, well, the, um, the training period lasts six weeks. At that, that time, you have to prove that you can maintain quality and put out a decent number of drawings. And for us, I think it was like 111 drawings a week or 115 drawings a week or something. Mm -hmm. So you had... Um, maybe that was... Yeah, anyway, um, th but the training period, basically, once you pass the training period, you get in to be an in-betweener. And that was the starting point of your whole career in animation. And people dropped off because the in-betweening wasn't for them, but other people um, stayed on because they had the goal of animation in mind and they wanted to progress to be an animator. Or, you know, the next step up from in-betweening was clean up, which is... Um, you know, working with the animator to clean up their rough drawings. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, I, you know, not everyone had the goal of becoming an animator. Um, but, you know, I think most people had that in mind. They wanted to progress. And so for me, it went from in betweening uh, a couple of years, that animation, um, very short period of time in character animation, uh, managed to get into character animation. And then the, the studio, um, didn't have an effects department and they wanted one of the animators to start an effects department and his name was Alex Staterman and uh, he was really incredible effects animator and he was the guy that uh, because before that time most animators had um, had to do their own effects so if you had a scene where a character gets zapped by lightning you had to do the character getting zapped and you also had to do the lightning wow. and it was just in television animation this is before we were a, a feature a direct to video studio mm -hmm. but um, yeah I, I did uh, a lot of years in um, effects animation before I became the effects supervisor when Alex decided to go across to character animation. He wanted to do some character stuff, so he put me in charge of the effects department. Yeah. So I did that till I left, pretty much. That's cool. The dynamic sounds almost like a kitchen. Like you have the master chef and then you have the sauce guy and the, the dishwasher and they're yeah. working their way up. and. Yeah, it's definitely very specialised, very departmental kind of... Yeah. You've got your individual departments taking care of um, all the different aspects of animation. And only since leaving Disney or doing my own stuff uh, have I managed to, be, you know, do something, do every step of the process. Like, you do mm. all your own in-betweening and you do your rough animation first. But And that's the thing, like, I remember feeling... A little bit pissed off that people would say oh this guy's from disney he shouldn't be posting stuff on new grounds he's a professional and all that stuff but um i was an artist like you and everyone everybody else on new grounds before i got the job at disney yeah i was just i was lucky enough to be able to be paid for what i was doing but disney never trained me in backgrounds or layouts or um you know uh, compositing and or you know the software aspect of things was all stuff that we all do as independent animators we all uh, focus on um, every step of the process so that we get this whole project at the end. I mean, if I only did effects animation, I would pretty much just have a show reel, a portfolio reel online. I wouldn't have these complete movies. Yeah, yeah and so, same with audio and um, sound effects, all that kind of stuff is, is stuff that I've taught myself, like all of us have to do. Yeah, absolutely. So it seems I've sort of abandoned chronological order here, so we're just going to jump back a bit. Um, right. Just briefly, could you fill us in on your childhood leading up to Disney? Like, what, what was your creative development like? I, it was very, very gradual, and it was just something that I think, like most artists at home, uh, or maybe it's just me that I'm... But living in this kind of like remote country town, I didn't really know what other people were doing. I just thought I had this ability that I wanted to, to use. And yeah. as an artist, you know, you have to, you just have to create. You can't not create, even if it's just doodling on on paper or something. But um, but yeah, for, uh, for, grow for me growing up, like doing art, like in some form was always my primary it was my primary goal. It's what I wanted to do all the time. Were stories part of your development in a big way? Because um, I remember even years and years ago when I went to your website, I used to read all the stories you put up and they were so riveting. And, and it sounds like you have this real background in your life of, of storytelling. Yeah, it's uh, my grandmother used to tell us stories and um, I, uh, she used to just tell us like scary stories. And when we were tiny kids, so, you know, she had no qualms about scaring the crap out of us when we were really small yeah. <laughs> and giving us nightmares. And I've always loved that, you know, 
Um, I've, I love telling kids scary stories because I know how excellent it is to be terrified at night. Mm. You know, well, I, I mean, a real exercise was, for the imagination. Yeah, definitely, and it gets yeah. your imagination working. I guess maybe that's where it all comes from is just mm. the imagination and how vivid an image you get of something when someone tells you a story it's taking place in your head it's unfolding visually in your head yeah. and that's you know if you exercise that maybe she's responsible for for the visual creativity kind of that i'm responsible for but the uh, the spoken word stories have always had a kind of uh, they've always been i've had a kind of spot for them in my heart you know just that uh, you can tell someone a story and it takes place in their head whereas in a movie um, you're giving them your vision of the story mm. you're not giving them their own vision of the story mm. so fast forwarding to 11 years after disney and the job comes to an end where were you then taken um well when i was at disney i there are there are a couple of stages to me leaving to breaking away um, I was running the effects department and that's when I was running the effects department, that's when I started to do my own stuff online. I was like making, uh, you know, writing scenarios and stories and developing characters and Brackenwood came out of that. And, um, and just after I decided to start putting them online and they started getting some uh, attention, um, I, I started to think, well, could I do this for a living without Disney? Can I break away from this? Because I was turning down work every other day. Mm -hmm. um, people getting in touch because they'd seen my stuff online and wanted to, uh, you know, me to do like an album cover or a music video or, you know, just a poster or something like that and offering to pay me. So I thought the money might not be as good, but maybe I can leave Disney and do it myself at home, mm -hmm. just be my own boss. And that's kind of like... The first thing I did was I decided I wanted more time to actually do that work. So I resigned from the effects supervisor position um, and just stayed in the effects department as an animator. Mm -hmm. I did that for another year or so, I think 18 months, and uh, then decided that I could pretty much quit altogether just because I was getting work. And um, I, I also didn't want any legal hassles with me being an animator with Disney and then working for someone else, you yeah. know, I, you know, I just had had this horrible feeling that someday Disney or someone would come, come <laughs> up and say, you owe us a lot of money or you're fired or some crap like that. So I just kind of, I think it was the best thing. It was terrifying. Like I said, it was a dream job. Yeah. Um, and I really, it was one of the hardest things and most thrilling things, mm -hmm. but it was also, you know, easily the best thing. I, here I am. What are we, nine, nearly ten years later? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I left in 2004, yeah, so coming up to ten years that I've been just working from home, my own boss kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, it's great. I've never gone back. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, so the, you were a part of uh, the early era of people getting really serious about animation online, about self-made animation. And uh, I remember myself being uh, a, a witness to a lot of this stuff when I wanted to learn, seeing people like you and other animators out there that were blowing my mind and it was amazing. And, and I was one of the ones that went through all your videos frame by frame and, and it, you know, you're a huge inspiration to me and a lot of other people out there. But how was it on your end, like when you started to emerge into this world of, of self-made animation and things like that, what was your experience? Um, Newgrounds was responsible for pretty much everything. You know, I've got Newgrounds to thank because uh, um, without, like, I remember having my own site and someone, I remember the guy's name and I have never been, you know, I haven't heard from him since, but he emailed me and he said his name was Vincent J. Westerband. Mm -hmm. um, so, Vincent, if you're listening, um, he said to me in the email, oh, I love your stuff. I've checked out your site. I've looked at your, you know, your movies and stuff. You should submit to Newgrounds. And before then, I hadn't really heard of Newgrounds. This was, must have been in about 2001 or something. Yeah. Um, actually, it wasn't... If you go back in my movies and look at the first movie that I submitted, it was pretty much the day after that. So maybe it was 2002 oh, or 2003 or something. Yeah. But yeah, he um, he said submit to Newgrounds and and you know you'll get some more eyes on your work. So so I did that and then, bang! It was just like 
that's where all the views came from. That's where all the traffic to my site came from. So, um, and later on, when when uh, sponsorships were a thing, I started, you know, hitting up Tom for sponsorship for for movies and um, uh, see if he was interested in sponsoring this movie or that movie or the yeah. next thing. But he was always like really, really good to to. He was really good like that. He would he was very supportive and mm. um, and all the heat I was getting from members uh, because it was a big thing back then. I was a professional and I was like submitting and topping the list, and it was kind of seen as something that was really unfair. But and I at one point it was I, a challenge to them because they couldn't meet that, you know. Well, it, well not necessarily. I think it, because Stamper interviewed me um, way back then. I think it must have been when I released. Prowlies, mm -hmm. um, and the first time that I really had fun doing water effects in a Flash movie, and Stamper interviewed me, and he one of his comments in the interview, um, his like closing comment kind of things was, Adam Phillips didn't wake up and have magic cornflakes and was able to do this. He he um, he has worked hard, like all of us, we're working hard, and he's you know he's developed this skill over time, and I, I was really grateful that. You know, he could articulate that and say it in, you know, to a big audience. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've always been grateful to Newgrounds and that kind of stage of, of that's pretty much where everything grew from. So, uh, Adam Phillips, could you run us through the uh, the transition that you went through from Flash to Toon Boom? Moving from Flash to Toon Boom was difficult because um, I didn't pick it up right away. Like, I was trying to, I think I made the mistake of, uh, trying to translate everything I'd done in Flash uh, mentally to Toon Boom, the Toon Boom workflow. And I found that um, it just was frustrating as hell because uh, I was sent a copy of Toon Boom early on, like a, a version of Toon Boom Studio um, by, by Toon Boom, someone at Toon Boom. And they said, try it out, tell, me, tell us what you think and, um, and get back to us. So I, I tried it out and I really couldn't get through more than a couple of hours just you know trying to tear my hair out i i kind of made the mistake of oh, well i didn't i didn't read too much in the in that help file or the f1 you know help file um i tried to figure it out on my own and i was trying to like looking at the interface trying to see where everything w was and but uh what i should have done like um like I eventually did was uh, take a week off and just spend time learning it. Um, so it wasn't until I was working with Bernard Derryman, who's an animator that you're probably familiar with. Yep. Um, but I watched he, all the Arjun Poopy. I think that's how right. a lot of people were introduced to his stuff. So Yeah, yeah. He's, um, he's another uh, ex-Disney colleague. Um, he's now directing Bob's Burgers oh, cool. um, in the US, yeah. Um, but he's uh, he got a job doing some character animation and doing some like animated inserts in a live action kind of lifestyle show uh, mm. here in Australia. So um, uh, he was doing the character animation. He asked me to do the backgrounds and he said, we've got to use Toon Boom. That's the, you know, you've got to learn to use Toon Boom for the job. And I went, oh, can't we do it in Flash? Cause yeah. I, you know, I, I just want to do backgrounds in Flash cause I know how to do it. And he said, um, let's go in uh, together and buy like a double package of um, Toon Boom software. So we went in and bought, it was called uh, Digital Pro back then. Yep. Um, Toon Boom Digital Pro was the software and, and you know, eventually became the, the three the three program suite that we know, Animate, Animate Pro and Harmony. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, Digital Pro. And so I, I took a, I decided to take a week off to learn it. And it was because I had to, you know. So yep. Usually the way things go is that when you have to do it, you know, you're thrown in the deep end and you just come out laughing because it's great. Yep. Um, well, in this case it did anyway. But uh, <laughs> I took a week off and um, and just within a couple of days I was blown away. All the stuff that um, you know, once you know how to, to use the software, once you, you the penny drops kind of thing, um, it's – it's more intuitive and more powerful and you know really awesome to work with whereas um, with flash you find I think we all find as flash animators there's a point that we push uh, flash to and flash just can't cope with what we want to do because yeah. we, we just keep growing artistically and growing we're trying to do more things with it and and it, and it doesn't grow <laughs> that's right we yeah. outgrow it so um yeah. with toon boom that hasn't happened with me yet I, i'm just constantly trying to i can't push its boundaries its boundaries are well beyond what what i've 
you know been doing with it so well, far. It so. caters to professionalism, astoundingly well, and I know a lot of feature films and and TV shows use it. So that's right, yeah. Um, and it's made it's built on the the traditional workflow as well, which is another way that like once you, I mean, if you if you're a flash animator, learn trying to learn Toon Boom, whatever you do, don't try and um, try and treat it like Flash. Mm. Forget, try, don't unlearn Flash, but just forget what you've learned about Flash and, you, and treat this as another piece of software that you're going to, to learn from the ground up. And, oh, well, you know, a couple of days in, it'll the penny will drop. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's, let's talk about that transition then because I've been asked by a lot of people about the transition and I am personally quite curious about it as well because I intend late this year to, to really give it a go. Um, so what what's the difference between Animate, Animate Pro and Harmony and what's, what, what are the kind of things that you would recommend to keep in mind briefly for people who wanted to check that out? Um, well, uh, for, for Animate, Animate was designed originally to be a competitor, direct competitor to Flash. So if you're coming from Flash and you want a gentle, like kind of introduction to Toon Boom, uh, check out my <laughs> intro videos or the other, the other videos that Toon Boom have done um, on how to use Animate. Um, and hopefully that will give you a gentle introduction into, you know, like I said, forget Flash. Um, don't, I, mean, I don't mean forget it, but <laughs> forget what you know about Flash um, when you're trying to learn Toon Boom. Uh, Animate is like kind of the entry level pro independent professional kind of software uh, where you can do frame by frame animation, the equivalent of tweening, uh, morphing, um, which is the equivalent of shape tweening, masks and cutters and backgrounds and drawing, t all the drawing tools and pretty much everything you know about Flash will be in Animate. But as you go up, like Animate Pro has um, really cool effects like variable opacity masking and variable blur. So if you've got like um, mm. a column of smoke that starts, you know, with a blur value of three and as it goes higher, the blur value goes to 33 or something wow, like that. So, that's so it's cool. gradually, yeah, and you can do that with masking as well for, you know, really awesome shadow effects like a shadow at a character's feet is yeah. sharper near the feet and fuzzier away. From, yeah. Cool. Um, and then, but that's, you know, <laughs> It's probably better examples I could have used for really amazing stuff in Animate Pro, but there's really, really amazing um, effects that you can apply to your work. Um, and Harmony, how and does that come into it? Harmony has even more effects. So Harmony so, has just got everything. Harmony is um, the step up, it's the top Yeah, step. and you can, with Animate Pro and Harmony, you can tilt your drawings in 3D. So you've got a like a like a, a flat scene and you can tilt it in 3D. So you can draw a, a checkered floor, say, and lay it down yep. uh, so it's in perspective and then you can have your characters on top of that. You can build whole mm. rooms with flat you know, walls all tilted in 3D. And then of course the cameras can be 3D as well. So you can ro roll your cameras around the room wow. or if, you, if you choose to do that. But yeah, but yeah the, the cameras of 3D camera kind of works, but the 3D camera space is something that's one of the big selling points of Toon Boom software because uh, in Flash, if you want to move, you know, a VCam across a scene, um, you're moving one viewfinder, kind of one border across a large background um, from one point to another. Yeah. Um, and if you want to move through backgrounds or through layers of a background, you have to manually <clears throat> tween them, VCam or not, you have to manually move them uh, tween them bigger and pass the scene. Yeah. Um, but with a 3D camera space in Toon Boom, you can actually, you've got a top-down view of your camera, your workspace with yeah. your layering, and you can separate your layers in 3D space, and you can move the camera, visually look down onto the scene and move your camera through those layers. And in the, in the scene, it's just all automatic. It just, it adds so much depth and realism to the scene. That's so amazing. how many, like that's with Animate Pro and that's with Animate as well, like the camera and everything, the, the, the bottom software is in Animate, uh, camera is in Animate, but uh, in Harmony, uh, you've got all these amazing effects like deformation, you can put actually, you can put 3D models into anima into Harmony. Yeah. So you can do, you know, some animation or some modeling in Maya and bring it into Harmony and, you know, roll it around and see what angle works best and position, you know, you can build sets. Um, you can bring in like, say a spaceship, a 3D model of a spaceship and have it, you know, animating through 2D elements or, wow. yeah. Wow, that's so and, cool. 
yeah, and it's uh, yeah, there's other really amazing effects as well that you yeah. can apply, like turbulence and stuff. That's uh, I did some videos on that recently, but yeah, incredible. I've got uh, some questions I'm going to throw at you from social media, from Facebook and Twitter, uh, mm -hmm. from some of your fans. And Rafa Pagaza asks, "What your secret for success is?" Uh, the secret, my secret for success, I've said this a few times, is um, do it until you can't do it anymore. And when you're completely sick of it and you're through with it, do it some more. <laughs> <Something like> that, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Elliot Shanley asks if you enjoyed 2013. Uh, 2013 was a tough year, but um, uh, I am uh, looking forward to 2014. Good. <laughs> Douglas Alberts asks, what do, you, what do you want to see students perform best at to get a job in animation? If I was hiring in animation, I'd want to see dedication. So um, from a personal point of view, uh, if you're... Um, if you're not dedicated, it's going to, if, if it's not, if your heart's not in it, it's going to be a lot of hard work. So if you're not naturally dedicated or talented or um, inspired to do art, then you probably shouldn't be focusing on doing, being an animator, you know, because it's, a, it's going to be a lot of hard work. Whereas if your heart's in it and you're very dedicated and you're passionate and inspired, um, it won't seem like work and you'll be, you can do it for the rest of your life. Sean Fox says, what was the experience like working for Disney? I know we talked about this a lot, but if you were to summarize that experience in a, in a sentence, what would it be? Yeah, um, like I said, it's definitely a dream job. But there's no two ways about it. My entire social life was built around the people I worked with. They're all the best friends that I had were the people that I worked with. Mm. A lot of people you never want to see again as well, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was my life and it was... A dream job and there's there's no denying that and um, I was incredibly lucky to have that opportunity and um, and to get that experience um, and I highly recommend it cool Kevin McElwain asks to be or not to be um, because I'm so I, I do a lot of self-analysis and my imagination is a huge part of my life um, I, I ponder life's existence and the meaning of, you know, my existence and the meaning of life a lot. So I definitely have to say to be. Good. And Jay Incorporated asks, what was the biggest thing to inspire you to this day? Uh, to this day, my biggest inspiration artistically was Simon Bisley's Lobo. Um, he's a comic book artist and Lobo is a DC comic book character. And I would spend... Um, I'd pretty much sleep all day and draw all night mm -hmm. and I would look, I would have like Lobo's comics um, uh, you know DC comics um, done by Bisley and I'd be like looking at his hands and um, you know the way he drew hands and the anatomy and the shadow and you know tone all pen and ink and I would just be doing that all night on huge sheets of paper just filling it wow. with you know postage stamp sized up to big drawings just just hours on end and that That's was so that was the, that that period of my life was probably the turning point of where I decided that, um, or where I think, and some of those drawings that I did on those nights were actually I sent them to Disney as part of my test, oh, as nice. part of my application. So um, those and other comic book pages that I'd done, I sent them to say, here, look, I can draw. Can I have a job? That was my application to the uh, to the in betweening department. Yeah, and uh, that's how I got in. That's great. Well, that mm. is that's ba that brings us to the end of the interview. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Adam Phillips. I really appreciate it. Your uh, your work has been an inspiration to me throughout my creative de development, and a lot of the people who are, are on my channel and, and are self educated animators as well. So it's it's a really been a great pleasure. No problem. Cool. So everyone, you can check out Adam Phillips's work. The links are in the description to his YouTube channel, his website, and the body uh, animation effects course. Uh, so that's it for now. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you later.